What is up, YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun Gaming, and welcome back to He Who Fights with Monsters, book one. This is chapter 64. Take my wife, please. Luckily for Jason, most of the contracts in the jobs hall were for areas close to the city. Unless the threat was urgent, those fielded further away were posted on each town or village's notice board. Every month, the Adventure Society would send out a number of people to patrol those areas and resolve those notices. It was not a popular task, as it was meant, as it meant a full month away from the city and any opportunities that might arise. Jason started taking one or two contracts a day, depending on the location. He would then try to clear a notice or two off the local boards while he was out. Even if it meant spending the night out in the Delta, people were more than welcoming, especially as he as he took the time to help heal any sick locals. In the jobs hall, Jason placed a notice on the desk. Albert was on duty again. Today, making a record of the contract. Badge, please, Albert said. Jason took out his Adventure Society badge and touched it to the contract. There was a shimmer on the badge, as the magic paper, as well as the magic paper, and Albert filed it away in one of the drawers. New, New quest. Contract. Bog Shambler. A bog shambler has appeared close to the village of, of Hool. You have accepted a contract to eliminate the creature. Objective, eliminate bog shambler. Zero of one. Reward, spirit coins. The Adventure Society awarded iron rank spirit coins for iron rank monsters. The amount depended on the amount of monsters, the time traveled, perceived difficulty from 10, anywhere up to 100, if the contract proved more difficult than was originally assessed, bonuses would be given. And they went from extra coins all the way up to an awakening stone, although such a reward was extremely rare. Jason himself could loot coins from each monster, while the quests that appeared for each contract would give more coins yet again, and sometimes other valuables. He was effectively being paid in triplicate for each contract. Your armor is looking a bit ragged, Albert observed. That thorny-tongued frog from yesterday... It certainly was as thorny-tongued as advertised, Jason said. The armor self-repairs, but it got torn up pretty well. It'll be fine in a few days. I imagine you got torn up as well. I self-repair too, Jason said. You on tomorrow, Bert? Nah, they got me on the, on the admin desk tomorrow. I'll see you in a few then. Jason made to leave, but found someone standing in his path. It was a tall, gangly fellow who looked a few years older than Jason. He had an iron rank aura, so he was probably the age he looked. He was wearing robes that were a size too big with the emblem of the Magic Society pr prominently placed on them. Mr. Asano, the man said. And you are? Standish, the man said. Clive Standish of the Magic Society, to be precise. I am adjunct assistant to the deputy director of the Magic Society Greenstone Branch. That must make for a long desk plate. Is there any reason why you're standing in my way, Standish? Actually, Mr. Asano, I've been looking for you for some time. Well, it isn't my fault, Jason said. I had no idea she was your wife, and you can't blame me. What? Clive said. I'm not married. She told me the same thing, Jason said, shaking his head ruefully. I wouldn't worry about it. Clive's brow creased into a furrow. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. Jason patted him consolingly on the arm. Welcome to my life, Jason said, and walked past Clive and out the door. Or left alone inside the job hall, Clive stood on the spot, confused. What just happened? That's Jason, Albert said. Nice enough guy. Bit odd. Bert, Clive said, turning to the man behind the desk. I thought you sold fruit. Ah, you're probably thinking of my brother, sir. Bert. In the Delta, Jason had been given a room at the only inn in the village. After clearing out a monster and healing some of the sick, the innkeeper refused to take payment. The room was humble but clean, and Jason sat on the floor performing his evening meditation. <laughs> Jason had yet to arrive in Greenstone when Rufus told him the three fundamentals of building his power as an essence user. Training to prepare himself, danger to push his limits, and meditation to consolidate his efforts. For months, Jason worked, out, worked on two of the three pillars under the guidance of Rufus, Farah, and Gary. Without all three, however, his abilities made little progress. Jason was driven to contra take contract after contract, fighting monster after monster. He was caught up in the heady rush of danger, his skills and powers on the line between life and death. It was one of the three pillars Rufus described as the foundations of power advancement, 
and Jason was starting to see the results. The fastest was his vision power, which Farrah had told him was normal. After all, it was constantly being used. The next fastest was the spell he used to cleanse sicknesses and poisons, Feast of Absolution. It had been crawling slowly but surely upwards as he used it over and over at the clinic. Once he started using it in combat, the slow climb turned into a regular upwards tick. Feast of Absolution was more useful in combat than he anticipated as many monsters spawned in groups. He could use it on a monster right before finishing it off, replenishing himself on the afflictions he had placed on it himself. The injunction of mana and stamina gave him the endurance to go full bore through an extended fight instead of needing to pay pace himself. Ability, Feast of Absolution. Blood has reached Iron 1, 100%. Ability, Feast of Absolution. Blood has reached Iron 2, 0%. It was usually during meditation that Jason's abilities broke through. He smiled with satisfaction, breaking his meditation and taking a sandwich from his inventory to munch on. His abilities grew stronger with each rank, although it was easier to see with some than the others. His vision power, for example, not only increased his ability to see through the darkness, but also his normal visual acuity. Colors were brighter, distant objects clearer. It was a concrete reminder of what all his efforts were for. He decided that after pushing himself so hard, he would take a few days to rest on returning to the city. He also wanted to look into obtaining some more Awakening Stones. Until he awakened all of his abilities, he couldn't make any true progress towards Bronze Rank. Jason Asano, Race, Outworlder, Current Rank, Iron, Progression to Bronze Rank, 0%, 0 of 4 Essences Complete, Attributes, Power, Blood, Iron 0, Speed, Dark, Iron 0, Spirit, Doom, Iron Zero. Recovery, Sin, Iron Zero. Racial Abilities, Outworlder. Interface, Quest System, Inventory, Map. Astral Affinity, Mysterious Stranger. Essences, 4 of 4. Dark Speed, 3 of 5. Midnight Eyes, Special Ability, Iron Rank 4, 3, 39%. Cloak of Night, Special Ability, Iron Rank 3, 0 up, 0.8%. Path of Shadows, Special Ability, Iron 3, 21%. Blood, Power, 4 of 5. Blood Harvest, Spell, Iron 3, 0,4%. Leech Bite, Special Attack, Iron Rank 2, 89%. Feast of Blood, Spell, Iron 2, 0%. Sanguine Horror, Familiar, Iron Rank 2, 16%. Sin Recovery, 4 out of 5. Punish, Special Attack, Iron Rank 2, 85%. Feast of Absolution, Spell, Iron Rank 3, 96%. Sin Eater, Special Ability, Iron Rank 3, 21%. Hegemony, Aura, Iron Rank 2, 67%. Doom, Spirit, 1 of 5. Inexorable Doom, Spell, Iron Rank 2, 67%. He would only start down the path to Bronze Rank once all of his Essence abilities were awakened. Jason didn't feel put upon by his lack of Awakening Stones, as even Humphrey didn't have a full set of powers yet. According to Humphrey, it was a Geller family tradition to supply their Scions with enough Awakening Stones to get started, while the rest had to be earned. The Adventure Society was known to give out Awakening Stones for exceptional service, although rarely. Usually it was for unexpected success when a contract proved more difficult than expected. Some open contracts also opened Awakening Stones as rewards for those with the greatest contributions. The completion would strongly, competition would strongly drive performance. Otherwise, Awakening Stones could be purchased through brokers, almost always at auction. They come up semi-regularly, but the prices were exorbitant. Rufus advised him to be patient and work hard. The Adventure Society made sure stones found their way into the hands of good adventurers. Returning to the city in the morning, Jason stopped at Jory's clinic before returning to his lodgings at the island. Jason's inn was expansive, closer to a luxury hotel than the inns and hostels of the Delta Towns. Downstairs was a, a sumptuous lounge, dining hall, and bar. When Jason entered the lounge from outside, he spotted the landlady, L Madame Landry, berating a tall man in scholar's robes. "'You think you can sleep in my lounge like it's a common flop house?' Clive was profusely apologizing. Somehow his gangly height seemed lesser than the tiny woman scolding him. I fell asleep while make, waiting on an acquaintance, Clive said. I'm happy to pay you for the fee for the night. So you do think it's a flop house? No, good lady, I can assure you that. Clive continued struggling until he spotted Jason, his eyes lighting up. Mr. Asano, he called out. 
Clive fled Ma La Madame Landry in Jason's direction. Here, good lady, Clive said, this is my acquaintance, Mr. Rosano. Who's your acquaintance, Jason said, voice and expression full of offense. After you slept with my wife? What? Clive asked, flustered, head swiveling between Jason and Madame Landry. Wait, you're not doing that to me again. He jabbed a finger in Jason's direction. You don't even have a wife. Not anymore, Jason said. She ran off with this tall, bl tall bloke from the Magic Society. You absconded with Mr. Asano's wife and have the nerve to use my inn like a cheap tavern, Madame Landry said. I never touched his wife. I have, I'm off upstairs for a rest, Madame Landry, Jason said. Probably best if you showed him the door. You have a good rest, Jason, dear, she said. I know you've been working hard. Clive watched Jason disappear up the stairs and was shuffled outside by Madame Landry. He stood on the street looking at the door that had been closed in his face. What in the world is going on? And that is the end of chapter 64. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have fun, guys.